to the training facility. Uh, my name is Marcel van Paasen. Uh, my uh, date of birth is 23. The course that I'm delivering today is uh, called Level 3 Conflict Management and today's date is 6th November 2023. Uh, again, welcome uh, today guys. Um, yeah, we're all guys here today. Um, I like to understand a bit of you, what you've done previously before we start with the, with the course and the course aims. So state your name, your role, and be very brief in if you actually experienced anything in regards to conflict management and how you escalate or de-escalated it. Just give me a quick example of what you did. Yes, my name is Samia Kitoni. My current role, I'm a contracts manager, uh, director of a security company. Uh, yes, I experienced um, uh, a conflict where it's escalated. Um, we during COVID, uh, when COVID was being implemented, there were a few COVID rules that were put code of conduct each company, and this one of the staff uh, we had to involve the management, and and then in the end it was resolved. Okay, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, David uh, Makolero. I'm a site supervisor, security. I've um, encountered a. Uh, some conflict management uh, in my own scenario is, um, is in the shop. A guy's reputing to be such because um, we're having a kind of encounter with uh, like um, buying stuff without not having a receipt. So we just have to get the management and the colleagues involved and you know, let us resolve this incident. Thank you. Yep, my name is Stuart Gilmore. Um, I work as an area manager for a security company. Um, we deal with um, conflict situations every weekend, whether it's just enforcing venue policies, um, whether it's a result of ejections. Um, most of our stuff is always de-escalated by talking, whether it's, like you say, enforcing venue rules. Sorry, so you're too drunk, you can't come in tonight, so that's how we deal with a lot of our stuff. Okay, thank you. Hey, my name is uh, Darren Brooks. I'm the area manager in Cornwall for a security company. Um, and again, as Stuart said, we have many, many occasions that we've had to use de-escalation tactics on. The re more recent one I can think of was we had two stag do's that had decided to have a fight amongst themselves. We managed to pull one group out the front, kept one group inside. And we must have tried to de-escalate them for the best part of 15 minutes so that they all went away peacefully. Perfect, thank you. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. Uh, I've been doing security for two years. Uh, um, through a, a, have had a number of conflict issues. Uh, I'd say the most recent one is um, just last weekend uh, when I done uh, football stewarding. I had the security there. Uh, we had a gentleman who was overly intoxicated and he was refused entry, but he was very persistent. And uh, we had to call management to deal with it, tell him that he's not allowed in, that there's rules to the stadium that you can't come in overly drunk. Mm -hmm. And then he <coughs> turned away. That's how we've dealt with. Okay, thank you. Um, it's good to, to understand that at least everybody has some type of experience, a long lasting experience or short experience, but it's good that I actually already heard a few different examples of what conflict is all about. Um, my own name is Marcel Vabasa, as I said in the introduction. I'm working for a company that's a risk consultancy, has nothing to do with door supervising. But my responsibility in Europe, Africa, and Middle East is also training. Um, not that I'm presenting myself, but sometimes I need to uh, witness and uh, mentor people that deliver training. And one of them is conflict management. Not per se do door supervisor, but in general. <clears throat> Before we start, actually, um, I have uh, some rules that everybody should have a good look at and read through. Uh, we're in a building, it's, it's, well, it's not the newest uh, building, but we need to uh, obey a, a few orders. Fire alarm, if there would be a fire alarm, there are two exits, or there's one exit out the door here, you can go to the left and to the right. There's an exit sign on the end of the halls. There's a stairs down, you can go out. There's an elevator on that side, you're not allowed to use, as everybody hopefully understands that when there's a fire, you never use an elevator, so go to the stairs, downstairs, go across the building, go to the gate, and on the left side of the gate, that side over there, 
there's the assembly area. So if anything happens, if there's a fire alarm, you go to that assembly area. Then the toilets, if you go outside of this door, to the left end of the hall, and the left side, two sorts of toilets, men's toilets, that's ours, end of the hall, and the left side. Any smokers here? Ah, bad habit, guys. Um, smoking, we do um, once, no, actually we have three uh, break times, and in the break time you can go outside. Outside in the door, on the left, there's a little couch and an ashtray where you can sit or stand and have your fags. Uh, we have three breaks. We have one at 11 for 15 minutes. Then we have a lunch break at 1.15 till 1.45. And we have a last tea break at 3.45 till 4. Please, if there are any questions, just ask them. There are no stupid questions, so feel relaxed. If there's anything you don't understand, ask, all right? Um, basic rule, listen, if somebody speaks listen to each other don't interrupt let them speak if you want to discuss that's fine but let anybody speak for himself this is a safe environment so again there are no stupid questions um, everything that's been teed, uh, taught here stays here so there's no um, well actually there's no wrong answer there's no wrong thing here this is a learning environment so you're allowed to make mistakes mistakes sorry and then the last one is about your telephones. I saw people with their telephones, put them on off or on silent. And if there's really needed, you have to take up and pick up your phone because you have an emergency situation at home, then go outside and um, talk at the phone over there. Any questions on the house rules? Cool, the aim of today, and specifically for this lesson, is to introduce you to a practical conflict resolution technique or techniques or strategies to use when dealing with managing conflicts. So there are all types of strategies, but also techniques that you can use to de-escalate or manage a potential conflict that might happen in your own role or when you're uh, supervising at the door. The objectives of today. Be able to identify basic indicators of conflict and choose a conflict management strategy and implement procedures to resolve disagreements. So, and you all already uh, said that you had those type of disagreements before, those conflicts. Today will be more in give you some tools and some hands to, to say, okay, this is what I could do in addition to the conflict. Maybe you know it perfectly, but there are always some things that you can learn. So uh, let's start with uh, the levels of anger by others, but also inside yourself. And you can look at this at the, the, the wall, there are at least eight to 10 different signs or levels that starts with being calm, to tense, getting annoyed or irritated, all the way up to furious. And you know, and again, I will come back to it in the next slide, is about non-verbal signs. And then think again of the, the, the levels of anger I just spoke about. So, if we're talking about communication, right, during a conflict or when you're talking to somebody is actually causing a conflict, maybe it's yourself that causes conflict. Communication is big and a huge part in escalation. So if I'm talking about communication, anybody here that has any idea or some good examples what be part of communication, what does uh, escalate when there's a conflict? Tone. Tone, yes, of course. Yeah. And do you get? Do you have a kind of example? Uh, I'd say a loud tone would uh, de-escalate the situation to further. Yeah, it could be say, oh, I can, uh, can I see your manager? Can I see your manager now? What is, that's a huge difference. What else? For the language. The language, body, body language. language. Yeah. Can you give an example? Uh, the posture, how you stand. Okay, can, can you show us? Okay, do you have another example that you, can, we can see the difference? Um, David? What, what, let me... 
What's the difference between those? Could you see what what, what he's actually trying to express? Yeah, I think he's trying to express like um, you know, like sometimes your posture can determine the action you take. Sometimes if you approach people freely, hands full from like this posture, that makes it be easier for you than going to aggressively like that. Someone might think that you're up to something. Yeah. What 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 if if I'm t- I can't okay, guys. What what does that what does that feel? What does that affect? If you if you like you know like um one you don't care mm-hmm. like two um not showing like a lot but I would say I don't say like you don't care yeah like you taking a piece like that kind of uh, expression yeah. yeah okay okay thank you okay please sit down so it's it's if I'm open I'm speaking like this I'm trying to explain something I say hey okay what do you want right because that's the attitude if you look like this and you stand like this that's an attitude that's a well, not the best attitude to show. I have some examples here. <coughs> Noise. Pain. Language. Emotion. Culture might be one of them. Uh, and UK, okay, fine, but if you would be abroad, cultural awareness is key in regards to security awareness. Is cultural awareness is a big factor as well in here. Authority. I'm, I'm the director and I say what's going to happen, right? If you have that type of attitude, people will start to, um, I'm not sure if you say de-escalate, but uh, escalate. Uh, we mentioned it in the example for you guys, drugs and alcohol, big events, uh, or when you go into a big bar, a huge bar, where alcohol and drugs is being used, then there will be loads of triggers that can uh, escalate. Disability and past experiences, right? If you already knew, oh, yesterday you had a bunch of people that were causing issues because of the toilets were closed, and today I'm, I'm already like this, oh, Jesus, today we have this again, my God. Okay, we are having. And if you look at the left side, at the circle, you can see that 55% of the escalators of communication is in regards to non-verbal signs. That's a lot, that's more than half of it. And you look at 38%, that's tone and volume. If you're talking open, if you're talking relaxed, it's for the per- person uh, opposite of you, way much easier to cope with, right? And then words, the last 7%. So you can see that non-verbal signs and the way you speak is a big trigger in regards to escalating things. So keep that in mind when you're in your own role when you're at the door, or you're at a supervisor or as a security guard somewhere, and people start talking to you, remember, always go back to, okay, take a deep breath, and relax, and try to speak in a normal volume, in a normal tempo, not too quick, and with, with proper words. <clears throat> I have two examples here. This is also communication. And if I'm looking at the left on Ibrahim, what does that mean? What would it say to you? The left one. Yeah? So the man and the woman. She's feeling discomfort, maybe. Yeah. Him, so she's pushing him away. Yeah. She's uh, irritated. Or I think he's trying to get hands on her. On the left. Yeah, I believe he's, I believe he's protecting herself. That's why she's pushing, she's pushing him away. She's yeah. It's always difficult if you're looking at a picture, right? Because you're assuming things. But it's it's just the position, how that person is towards her. He's trying to, he's push, she's pushing him away. He's trying to grab her. On the right side, um, Darren? Oh uh, yeah, uh, aggressive, uh, potentially very loud, quite hostile. What could it also mean? For his son, right? Yeah, because it could be at a football match. Yeah, yeah come on! Right, so again, looking at pictures, assuming things that's... So always try to understand exactly what's going on. Yeah. So if you're in a situation, don't bust in immediately, try to figure out first what is actually the issue, what is happening. Are we clear? Mm-hmm. This is about recognizing or trying to recognize. There might be indicators that recognize early signs or actually when it's already too late. Right, uh, have a look at these, read through them.
color is on purpose. On the left side is yellow and green, where it's still kind of relaxed, safe modus. And on the right side is orange and, and, and red. So that means, oh Jesus, this is getting uh, red alert, right? So you can see that, and I actually gave the, uh, the examples just now in regards to my volume. Instead of my volume, right? Or when I'm talking with my hands, or standing like this. And what do you want? Okay, what's the problem here? Right, that's completely different. That's already way too far. You have to be careful. So try to keep in mind these type of early signs and late signs because it will help you de-escalate. Uh, there are some uh, conflict dynamics and strategies for resolution. And again, read through them quickly. And keep them in mind. And by all means, write them down if you want to, because these will help you, support you, when you have a conflict or you want to de-escalate or you're talking to persons or somebody that's actually aggressive or somebody is not agreeing with you and still wants to do something that is not allowed. Right? So I will quickly go through them. Aggressive conflicts are often compounded by a refusal of inability to communicate. And that's what I just said. Communication and nonverbal is the biggest trigger here. Be willing to communicate. So again, that attitude of, okay, this is a problem, you have to go out. No, because the communication, there might be an underlying issue there. It couldn't even be the issue at that moment. Say what has to be said effectively and appropriately. Know how to say it and, and, and so that people remember it. Right, because it's, it's also kind of soft lesson that you're giving. Know when to speak and when not to speak. So if somebody's talking to you, let that person speak and not interrupt immediately. That will escalate. Now, some additional uh, potential solutions to break the anger cycle, create space and maintain distances. You all witnessed that already uh, prior in your own job, right? If people come too close, and we'll speak about this in a few minutes, ask questions to clarify. Okay, uh, explain me the issue, what's happening? And if you don't understand, try and, ex and uh, ask for explanation. Uh, summarize, uh, paraphrase, put, take topics that he was mentioning. Oh, so, okay, so I understand this and this is happening to you, right? The last one that might be good to say, if, if you feel it's getting escalated, make sure you have a colleague or look at your supervisor or call your supervisor, right? It's always good to have that backup. It, it's a teamwork. It's always difficult by yourself as an individual if you have any issues. Now, talking about the behavior cycle, uh, Batari box is fine, but it's a very simple kind of um, formula. My attitude affects your behavior, right? Your attitude affects my behavior, and that goes around in a circle, so it's all about how do I express myself? How does that person or the aggressor express himself? And that is actually um, steering up the fire or downgrading the fire. Does that make sense? My attitude, his attitude. <coughs> now what we normally have is called poems, where you say, okay, what is my position towards the person that's in front of me or next to me, have that safe dis uh, um, distance, the attitude, Look and listen. So what is he or she trying to say? Am I actually listening is what that person is telling you? Or is it just one way traffic? Make space. So make sure there's, there's that, that safe environment and your stance. Okay, again, uh, am I like this? Am I blocking the person? Remember those words. Uh, remember this word, palms, can help you uh, as a kind of simple uh, reminder. Now going to the human distances. I spoke about distance. Um, there is a, a physical, uh, what is it again? The, the cultural anthropologue that actually created this back in 1963. It's the circle of distances. While we're speaking about a public distance, that's just during an event that can, and it says there between 3.7 and 7 meters, and it goes up to the intimate space, and that's where it's interesting. Intimate space is that space within 20, 20 centimeters. And if I'm talking about intimate space, well, what am I referring to? The distance, how close you get into um, 
customer or whatever you're speaking to. Yeah, and what would be a good example of I, I'm happy with that intimate space? When you're close to your family or relatives or wife, then it's fine. Yeah. And would you allow a person that's creating a conflict or where you're talking to because he's not happy with what's happening, would you allow that in your intimate space? Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, you know. Uh, that's a danger to me. Yes. Cool. Um, questions about the theoretical part of the uh, scenario, um, uh, sorry, of the, the escalation of conflict management. So you have, it's a mini lesson, you have some signs, okay, this is how we can escalate, this is how I can de-conflict. Uh, cool. Okay, we're going to do a scenario. Right, and I'm having three people that will play as a role player, and I will have two people left that will be the observer. Cool. Um, following, I like to have you, you, and you outside on the hall. <coughs> what I did. That's what I prepared. So it's just a helping tool, right? You don't need it, but uh, one is supporting or is observing the, let's say, the aggressor, the person that's actually causing the issue. And one, you will be observing the two security uh, guards, okay? Is that fine? You just follow, and if there would be anything, you say, okay, this is a good sign or topic that we need to discuss, then do discuss it, right? There's nothing right or wrong, but that's why I said a tip and a top. So if it's a tip, it's okay, I did that last time, I did it that way, so that might help you. And the top is, oh, you did it great, because that's, I saw that. And that's the same, of course, with the role players. Uh, we have to look at, um, was he like this, was he verbal? So all the signs that are indicating that it could escalate. Okay, okay? clear? Um, you two can go in and I will um, ask you uh, to come out again. Okay. Um, you will be the person that's going to escalate um, inside. You are visiting an art fair. It's a world famous art fair. Right. Um, and you were promised tickets at the reception desk. So you go in and you say, I'm coming to pick up my tickets. The only thing you need to know is you're already annoyed when you're going in. That has nothing to do with the fair, but you're already annoyed. Mm. Yeah? And why are you annoyed? Because you just bumped into, uh, somebody else bumped into your brand new car yes. at the parking place. Mm. Took 30 minutes, you're annoyed and you go, oh, I need my ticket, mm. right? That type of attitude. That goes on for a minute or two, try to convince, yeah, I need my attitude, I have my ticket now, and it was promised, etc., etc. And then after some time, um, I will, he will escalate it, and his supervisor will come, and I will give you two things here, which would be good for you. Um, that if um, he starts asking questions, you can say, yeah, but I'm sorry, but I'm adding my attitude is because I just bumped into another vehicle and I'm sorry, etc. Yeah, so we also want to resolve it. Okay, thanks. You wait, you can wait in here. There's the second, the, the other two guys, please. You sit down and then we'll start in a minute. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, I was planning to actually do it too, but okay, possibly. Um, your security at an art fair, a huge, famous, world famous art fair with loads of top pieces, over 500 million of, of, of art pieces, paintings, etc. There will be a customer coming to the reception area, and you are the guard at the reception area, right? He's talking to you, he's coming, and he demands a ticket, right? Because it was promised to him, promised to him. Uh, you're going to, you're trying to, trying to understand what's happening. You de-escalate it as soon as he hits uh, his fist on the desk. And I want to speak to somebody now, okay? And he said, okay, so then you come into place. Then you're trying to figure out, okay, what's happening here. 
what um, um, can help you in the end if it doesn't be resolved, saying, okay, listen, uh, we can go to uh, the exhibitor that promised you the tickets, we can call him, ask him to come here and see, okay, we can resolve it with the tickets. Because if he said there were tickets for you, then he's the person that um, can resolve it for you. There's one other thing, but I'm not going to tell you, try to figure out, because he's already annoyed when he comes in. But he's already coming to the phase already annoyed. And you see that, you see that when he comes in. Okay? Yeah, so sorry. Okay, that's fine. Question? Yeah, I'm just on my role and play, he's just in time in after he did. He, yeah, he, okay. he calls you as the supervisor. The supervisor, yeah. alright. Okay. okay, thanks. Let's use this as the desk. The security guard at the reception desk. For the people that are witnessing, we're at an art fair. A big event where we have um, art that's more uh, worth more than 500 million. Right? He's the security guard, but he's at the reception desk. Right, so he takes also phones, but he also hands out uh, tickets or floor plans, etc. He's the customer, and he comes in now. Yes, maybe Look, check it out, please, buddy. I was told I'm going to get my tickets here. Right. Okay. Can I have my tickets? Right, okay, listen. Fucking hell. I need right. my tickets. Right, yeah. Okay. Now! Right, okay, listen, if you just listen to me, I will get my supervisor. You can help, okay? Just give me one second. Get me my tickets yeah. now! Okay. Sir? Yeah, what's awesome. the issue? You? This gentleman was promised a ticket on a desk. Obviously, I can't find his ticket on a desk. It's getting a bit irate. I need my tickets! Yeah, okay, what's up? We're just trying to figure that out. Well, sorry, sorry, how can we help you? I've got a confirmation here. Okay. I need my tickets. Yeah, I was told I'm going to get my tickets here. I need them now. Okay, so what we can do for you, you just need to calm down, please. Do you know who promised you the ticket? I've got a, a confirmation here. Okay. I paid for them. Alright, calm down. We're not trying to no, I can't calm down. Please, you need to calm down. That's the the fucking man just bumped in my car there. Well, we can't help I, you. I need you my tickets. You need to calm down, please. Okay, is there any possible we can see who's. I'll send you the tickets or who you... I need my tickets. tickets. Check your records. Okay, but do you have a ticket? You don't have a ticket, so we need to also help you. You need to show us or tell us who promised your tickets. I was told I'll get my tickets here. But we don't have a ticket. I was told I need to get my tickets here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The only way we can help you if you can tell us or whoever promised you the tickets. That's the no. way we can do our job effect. If you are able to force a shouting, we can help each other. Okay, you need to try to understand that we're doing our job. And the only way we can help you, if you can tell us who promised you the ticket, I think the best we can do to solve the problem. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Okay, please. Yeah, you can show us who promised you the ticket. It's all right, thank you very much. We'll try and get it sorted as soon as possible. If you can wait on the reception for a second. I'm really happy to work with him just to get him away for the cell phone. I'll see who is going to take it. Yeah, that's no problem. Alright. Okay, stop. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go to the observers, um, just a quick feedback from yourselves. <coughs> How do you feel it went? Is it resolved in the end? What is there any trigger that you had to say, okay, it, I de-escalated it or it escalated because of? What you feel? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, as indicated there that someone bumped into my car because I have the confirmation here, but uh, because I'm upset of the previous incident, I was going on and on, mm -hmm. whereas I would have just showed this, the confirmation, and they issued me the tickets, yeah. but I, I went on and on because I had the previous anger. Did from, you mention that? What happened? I mentioned, but it was not really put into consideration. Yeah. Um, he would have known that 
you know, I have it, but I don't want to show them. But he let me continue on to it instead of there realizing that this customer here has had a problem. So I've got a different <coughs> issue other than the tickets. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks, Samuel. What is your your feeling? How did it go? Uh, I feel it goes all well because we just um, were like we offer the option for the customer because we told her to like to calm down to see how we can solve the problem. We're giving time to calm down, recess mm -hmm. emotion. Yeah, there's no any moment we went with aggressiveness or <coughs> force. So we're trying to dis dis the um, conflict by offering the customer to calm down, see who is in the ticket so we can find a way we can help him out. Yeah. yeah. And you, because you were the first. That yeah, I, I think because he was there. Uh, I reckon that the car should have happened away from the, the museum. Probably from us telling him to calm down was probably patronising more of a trigger mm -hmm. for him because he's already angry, he's already built up. Um, so like you say, maybe we should have touched on that as a separate thing to try and deal with that issue. You then might not have been so aggressive trying to get his ticket and then like you say, we could have resolved it probably quicker without him banging the tables and being... <coughs> Right. Yeah, perfect. And you know, uh, I mentioned it before, right? The issue doesn't necessarily be at where you are at that moment. That could have been a trigger prior. So he did mention it, he did hear it. So it could have been, not saying it had, but it could have been a kind of diffuser saying, oh, okay, I see you're really upset. Uh, what is, uh, is, did something happen? Whatever. At least trying to, to, to elaborate a bit on that. But let's go to the two observers. Um, no, I start with you. Yeah. So, um, would, would you want me to, how do you want to evaluate it? Sorry. Well, I just want to hear a, a top and a tip. Okay, so this went really well. Yes. And this is something, well, maybe this is an advice. You could do it different the other time. Um, well, <coughs> the way it was escalated, it was, um, I'd say the way it was de-escalated. Uh, it was very well done, mm -hmm. gentlemanly. Uh, he offered uh, a solution to him, uh, even though he was extremely angry. <coughs> um, from one point of view, he had an empty ticket, and the other one, uh, the previous accident. Uh, one thing I'll tell you that we need to work on uh, probably more communication with the with the uh, with the customer from the previous uh, from the first security. Mm. Okay, that's my thanks. Yeah, similar to. Um, you more communication to start with from the first security guard and um, he gave up straight away and went to his supervisor um, but what went really well was your calm demeanour keeping everything there, uh, good open hands and yeah, very, very well explained Did you see any signs or de-escalators that we had in theory that came during the scenario? Calm voice, giving, <laughs> trying to give a solution, those type of things so there were some good points that was there but also some things that would be good to learn when we're going forward, right? That listening phase where you listen, okay, what is he actually saying? Try to, and in the beginning, well, he's actually not saying, I want my ticket, that's all he said, right? But when he started about that accident, might have been a way in to say, okay, I understand you're very upset. I heard you had an accident. When did that happen? Oh, just now, oh, I can't imagine that you're, that you're upset. What happened? Well, the guy uh, ran away. He caused a huge damage at my car. And that eases him down, he can do his story, and then he can go back to, okay, I understand you have a problem with your ticket, what is happening? What, what, what can we do to resolve it, right? Just make it a bit more in a calm um, state, okay? Uh, well done, thanks. Um, guys, um, going back to the course, um, we try to identify factors that create conflicts. Well, we saw loads of them. And we choose a conflict management strategy or implement procedures to resolve the disagreements. So we tried different, or you guys tried different techniques, and uh, at least in the end we came to a conclusion that the client that visited was happy. And in the end, we de-escalated. That's the, that's the main thing. Yeah. I hope you learn something from it, and that you can take some points with you uh, if you're going actually uh, when you're working as a door supervisor. Because these things, like you already said, happen daily from whatever to a ticket to a drunken person to somebody has not allowed it. Multiple things. Alright? Any questions from your side? 
So, like I got a question. Yes. Yeah. So, what happened in a in a scenario when you call someone who is aggressive and refuses to leave the premises? When he refuses to leave the premise because yeah, of he's been aggressive. Yeah. Well, there there are a few things. Normally, um, and I give you an example because I actually had an experience with this, um, and the guy was from the ticket. Uh, actually, the people at the reception just didn't know it. But uh, my personal view is. I always take that person aside, a step aside with the person, instead of having a few hundred people looking at you, and you know what happens, start to film, you're trying to defuse or trying to, and somebody's screaming at you, the only thing that's in the film is somebody screaming, right? They see you in a suit or with a branding name, so I always like to defuse it by, oh, could you please come with me, you can discuss it, so you're out of sight of the rest. And then again, start. Okay, if, if he's not allowed in for whatever reasons, then he's not allowed in. But there's always um, uh, possibilities to try and resolve it, right? And in this case, it was the ticket, it was there. You should have just called the exhibitor that, that sent him the ticket or ask again at reception, okay, look carefully, because, uh, right? Because he said, well, it's here on my phone. So it should have been there. And the second thing was, okay, I do understand you are very upset. The vehicle. You know what? Let's have a quick look at the at the, the camera footage, because the guy ran away. Look at the camera footage. Maybe we find the, the the person did it, and we can help you that way. So at least you have a, something to go to the police. Yeah. So that different type of solutions. Not saying they're perfect, but there's always a solution to at least calm down the situation. Thanks, guys, and um, up to the next lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.